Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Woman IT team lead transfers a difficult male customer to her male subordinate, who snores on the call, and then takes over to solve the issue in two minutes. The second story. New employee Luke at a cinema flirts with a taken girl and is rude to his coworkers. Luke gets fired for being unable to perform his duties alone. The third story. Boss tells me to clean the concrete encrusted mixing stick. I use the side of his van. And the first story is... Why of course you can speak to a man. This happened about 15 years ago or so. I was a team lead. This will be important later. At an IT help desk for a company that provided outsourced support to companies in a specific profession. Said profession is known for having employees that are very demanding and need everything right now. One of the people I supervised was, let's say, challenging. We'll call him George. George was late 15 or so days a month, spoke in a mostly incomprehensible mumble, and had been caught by callers multiple times falling asleep and snoring while on a phone call. He's also not so great at troubleshooting, and worse at documenting his troubleshooting steps. At this point, I'd been on a months-long crusade to have him fired, because he was dragging down the team and giving me a constant headache because I had to follow up with his disgruntled users. One morning I got a phone call from a newer user who was extremely agitated and already angry about his computer issues. I barely got off my standard greeting when this happened. Look, I'm sure you're really good at whatever it is you do here, but can I talk to one of the men? I need this done right now. I'm never exactly sure why people think my lady parts make me incompetent with a computer, but hey, he did ask for a man, so I'm happy to oblige. I check around the room. And it's early, so no one else is on a call. Gee, who on earth should I send this ray of sunshine to? Obviously, I inform George that my caller wants a man, and is insisting, so I'm transferring the call to him. George spends a good 30 minutes on this call. I hear him start snoring at some point, and he's getting nowhere with the issue. The guy he's working with is getting angrily loud enough that I can hear him over George's headset. Finally, the user demands to speak to George's manager, so George transfers him back to me and I sweetly apologize for the delay in resolving his issue and say I'd be happy to help him with his problem if he's okay with me working on it. For some mysterious reason, now he's fine with that. I know the exact fix because I helped the in-house IT people test it out. I have him fixed in two minutes flat. I have never heard such a meek thank you. Dude ended up asking me a lot of time after that. Which, thanks I guess? At least he was always polite to me. Edit. Since people are asking, George did finally get fired a few months later, long after I'd ever given up hope. The next story is... Don't want my help? Sure, go ahead and get yourself fired. A bit of background. A while back when I was still in high school, I worked at the local cinema to earn a bit of pocket money and experience. I stayed for a couple years, working weekends when school was in session. I think it was halfway into my second year when the target of this revenge came into the picture. We'll call him Luke. Luke was a new hire and was just learning the ropes. This was common as turnover was high, since we were all students. He seemed alright at first and everyone was nice to him, since we were all pretty close, and knew another from school and we welcomed him in. I don't think even a week passed before the problem started. The first issue I heard of was that Luke was trying to flirt with one of the girls. Thing was, the girl was already in a relationship with one of the other employees and everyone knew this including Luke. That didn't stop him though and eventually the girl told him to his face to cut it out. It only got worse from there. Now, I do my best to see the good in people and give them the benefit of the doubt. Despite what the others were saying, I still tried to get along with him. This unfortunately changed during the first real conversation I had with him. We were on break at the same time, and about five of us crowded into the little break room for lunch. I forget what exactly we were talking about, but I remember it was an uncomfortable topic, and Luke was using a lot of explicatives. The break room was not soundproof and there were patrons outside, especially children. I tried to warn him about using that language so loudly and that he might get in trouble if a customer heard him. Immediately, his attitude toward me changed, and he responded with something along the lines of, I can say what I want. I have the right to free speech. Don't tell me what to do. What? Sheesh. Okay, chill. I was just concerned, but you do you. A few minutes later, the convo had switched to high school, and Luke was raving about how Caucasians were the majority in all the high schools in our district. Now, for my high school, this isn't true, as most of the community and students attending were Latino and made up about 70% of our student body. I told him as much. Me, that's not the case for high school. Luke, uh, yeah it is. White's the majority everywhere. I have a friend that goes there. Me, I actually go there, it's mostly... Luke, why are you talking? Me, excuse me? Luke, 
Who invited you to this conversation? I wasn't talking to you. Who asked? Now, this irritated me. I know it's a joke about looking for who asked, but this was before that became a thing, and I found it extremely rude. But in a moment of clarity, the best comeback came to mind, like arguing in the shower by yourself. And to this day, I could only wish to be able to recreate the moment. Smiling, I threw his words right back in his face. Free speech. The others at the table were laughing as I threw away the rest of my lunch and left the break room. My heart was beating too fast from the weird adrenaline rush I got, and I spent the rest of my break in the back of concessions until it was time to clock back in. I think that convo was what sparked Luke's hatred of me. Ever since then, he would glare at me whenever I walked by, would dump the trash from his bin when we were sweeping the floors for me to pick up, and generally was a jerk. His behavior kept getting worse. He would threaten to fight people. He was a short potato of a boy, so no one was really scared. Argue, say rude, passive-aggressive, or downright racist things, and was generally just a jerk. At some point during a shift that I wasn't there, he cornered the girl he had been eyeing and kept verbally harassing her to the point that she hid in the manager's office where he couldn't get to her. She was a sweet and loyal girl and a friend, and she and her boyfriend could be described with the phrase puppy love, and had been together for a long time. The boyfriend was angry when she texted the group chat about what had happened and wanted to get Luke fired. However, people were hesitant about this, saying that managers wouldn't want to because he'd claim discrimination and that he hadn't done anything blatantly wrong. Then another one of the employees made a suggestion. Luke was incompetent. We all knew this. Why not make the managers see it together? Revenge time. It wasn't hard to do, since Luke would tend to shoot himself in the foot. When possible, we'd point him out to managers when reviewing the cameras in the halls about him dumping his trash can when sweeping onto the ground in front of patrons. When he was cursing up a storm during break, a text would be sent, and someone would lead a manager to him to be caught. He rarely cleaned up, was rude and loud, and the incident with the girl didn't help his case. It still wasn't enough, and week after week his name was on the schedule. Then my opportunity came. See, at the cinema there's a position called Point, aka the ticket taker that lets you into the theater area. It's the second most dreaded position, the first being self-serve cleanup as you have to stand in place and interact with customers at a rapid-fire pace, smiling and listening for theaters to be called at the same time. When the night ends, the last person on point has to close and clean the self-serve stations. Today, to my initial dread, Luke and I were both on point. The entire time, Luke would leave his station and pace the lobby, toward me, then back, not even sweeping the ground as he went. He wasn't supposed to leave point, and had to walk around customers to get back to his podium to help them. He was told off by a manager once or twice for this, but he continued his antics anyway. Then as things slowed down, one of the managers approached me and told me we were going down to one point, one person at the center rather than at both entrances, and that I'd have to explain to Luke how to close point before I went back to help clean concessions. It had to be this way since I had already taken the sanitation test, and Luke had yet to do so, and therefore wasn't allowed behind concessions. When I finished closing my point, I walked over to Luke and told him to move his podium to the center so he could take closing point. He did, though scowling at me. When he was said, I began to explain. Me, so you'll be closing point tonight after the last movie starts. You'll need to go to the... Luke, go away. Me, what? Luke, I don't need your help, so don't talk to me. Me, but I need to teach you how to close point. Luke, I don't care, shut up. Me, I know you don't like me, but this is work. You need to... Luke, no, I don't want your help. Shut the hell up. Me, but... Luke, F off, don't talk to me. At this point, I was beyond upset. I was furious. I was trying to help, even after how he had acted, how he treated everyone here. I didn't care what he said in the break room, but it shouldn't affect work. This was ridiculous. I must have snapped or something because I complied, walking away saying, fine, I don't care, don't ever talk to me again. Luke, hey, I said, me waving a hand over my shoulder, don't talk to me ever again. I went behind concessions to help where he couldn't reach me. I don't know when, but I started crying out of frustration, and one of my friends came and hugged me bringing me to a corner to cool down. I don't get angry often and when I do it makes me scared. I was just sick of his antics, sick of the way he spoke to me, just sick of his attitude. I'm not sure how long I sat back there, but soon enough that same friend came and waved me to the front of concessions. I wiped my face and walked out, and he pointed to point. There was Luke being instructed by the manager on how to close point, and the manager did not look happy with him. Arms folded, frowning, flat tone, everything spoke of irritation. My friends said they'd already explained that Luke refused my help when the manager asked them what was going on, as Point can be seen and heard from almost the entire lobby. Seeing the scene lifted my spirits a bit, and I was able to end the night relatively easily. The next weekend when the schedule came out, I didn't even have to check my email. It was posted in the group text, specifically the section with Luke's name. It was blacked out. If he had quit, his name would have been removed.
but the fact that it was blacked out meant it was a sudden event. Luke had been fired. Considering we were always low on staff and they had to worry about discrimination, I'm guessing there were enough complaints that they had to fire him. I'd like to think that last interaction I had with him was the final nail in the coffin, but I was just glad to see him go more than anything. I heard he worked at a common fast food place for a while, but ended up getting McFired from there too. Good luck in life, Luke. You weren't missed. The last story is... Clean the quick mixer? You got it, boss. Years ago, I worked for a high-end contracting company. It was a small business, about 10 people total, including the three owners. Two were brothers and were in charge of large renovations, and the third was in charge of all the custom cabinetry and high-end furniture we made in the shop. He was my direct boss. I only ever interacted with the brothers occasionally, normally in the mornings and afternoon when they would come to pick up and drop off tools in the cargo van. Part of my shop duties every day included cleaning up their tools and putting them away, and I can't leave until it's done. Now the brothers had a bad habit of never washing off the mixing stick for cement. Every day it would come back caked in dried concrete that I'd have to spend up to an hour breaking off. I'd ask them several times to just wash it down with a hose after they use it, but was always met with, oh yeah, we'll remember next time. After a few months of this, I was getting pretty frustrated. One extremely hot summer day, I was sitting on the dock of the shop waiting for them. I was caked in sweat and sawdust from making cabinets all day and was in a bad mood. They pull up and we start unloading. Lo and behold, they hadn't cleaned the stick again. The base of it was practically a complete ball. Me, seriously, what the F? B1, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Me, how hard is it to wash it off? I've asked for months. B2, it's your job to clean it, just clean it. Cue the compliance. I lifted it up, brought my arm back, and swung it as hard as I could at the side door of the cargo van. The sound of denning metal was huge. Most of the concrete blasted off of it. I handed the stick to the flabbergasted brother and said, there I cleaned it, before walking back into the shop. Both brothers wanted to fire me but couldn't. The third guy was my boss and refused. The third owner wasn't a brother. He'd started a high-end furniture business and they bought into it after theirs failed, because they had no mind for finances. He told me a month later that every time he saw the dent, he laughed. They always brought it back clean afterwards. Obligatory edit. I just wanted to share a funny story to everyone that I remembered while cleaning my own mixing stick this morning. To those that ask why I didn't just bang it all the time, it's a $15 tool. If I banged it clean each day, it would be so bent that it would need to be replaced each week. That gets expensive. To those that ask why I didn't have to pay for damage to the van, it was a paid off brutalized van already. My hourly rate was more than the cost of repair for the several months I cleaned it. Since it was already dented, another one didn't matter in the grand scheme. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.